what's going on here seems rather curious in the face of rising grades and uh, elevated expectations about uh, schools' abilities to perform and students' academic achievement. Yes, the, back in uh, 1966, uh, there were about twice as many C's as A's given out in the, uh, high, in the public schools in the United States. By the late 70s, there were twice as many A's as C's. So you have this long period during which all sorts of test scores are going down, at this very same time, grades are going up. Is that going on at both the elementary, secondary yes. level, and college at, level? At the college level. Mm -hmm. uh, during the entire decade of the 1980s, uh, the percentage of A's at Yale University never fell below 40%. So you're saying there's, there's a great inflation going on uh, and there are declining test yes. scores. Yes, yes. And this is, this is part of the deception because if people knew exactly what was happening, I don't think the test scores could have kept going down as long as they did. But everyone was told, as they saw the wonderful grades that kids were bringing home, they were told glowing things. Uh, when I was teaching back in the 1960s, I kept hearing that this was the brightest and best generation that we'd had. And I kept saying, they don't seem to be enrolling in my courses. Uh, and it was only into, in the, in, well into the 70s before the word came out that the data show just the opposite of what the educators were saying. And now it would seem that a good many educators are in agreement with you when they talk about the serious straits that our American schools are in. They agree in, in the sense only that these this kind of talk gets them more money. Uh, and in fact, that's used as the biggest reason why we need more money. But in point of fact, uh, the uh, money spent on education was rising by leaps and bounds throughout the entire period during which the test scores were going down. Uh, somewhere in the early 80s, there was a, there was a leveling off and a few little uh, uh, rises, but we have never come close to where we were in 1963. Talk about the social phenomenon you call affective education and how it plays into this whole uh, question of just how good schools are. A great deal of time and energy uh, are spent on things which are non-academic subjects, which are essentially psychological kinds of subjects, uh, exercises. And this is known as affective education, as if you can somehow educate people's feelings rather than to educate their intellect. And the problem is that uh, most public school teachers have no such qualifications, if anyone has such qualifications. But certainly they are not psychiatrists or psychiatrists, psychologists. Uh, they have no idea of the emo emotional turmoil they may be stirring up uh, in the students. And there's some evidence that that's, that's happening in terms of medical reactions, of vomiting, uh, signs of nerves in various uh, ways. Uh, but more than that, what they tend to do is to try to alienate the child from the parent. And I think that's the most dangerous thing they how do. How did they do that? Well, if you read the literature, it's just astonishing how parents are depicted in the literature as people who are hung up, who have old-fashioned ideas. Uh, one of the areas in which they do this is sex education. But it's not sex education as such, because there are a whole series of kinds of education of the uh, emotions, as they would put it, uh, which do the same thing. And the idea is that the child is supposed to make his own decisions, and he's supposed to pick his own values on which to make those decisions. So the whole history of the human race is sort of thrown out the window. And Johnny is supposed to start and draw upon his entire eight or nine years of experience in the world uh, to decide uh, what his values ought to be. It was interesting in the uh, book you used an example of an exchange that you had with a student. Uh, and I guess your question to the student was something like... Um, well, what did you learn? And the response was something like, I learned that my thoughts and my feelings are valued. Yes. Uh, whereas there was no effort to speak to a fact or something learned, but rather the emphasis oh, placed yes. on feeling oh, I, and, I know, I know and the interpretation. That, that was actually Ben Stein, a reporter in Los Angeles. And he asked this graduating senior who was considered the smartest kid in the class, what, did you, what do you know about the Vietnam War? And he said the Vietnam War was when North and South Korea were fighting, and they drew a line along the 38th parallel and so on. And uh, Ben Stein said, would it bother you to know that that's completely wrong? And he said, no. And he said, then what you just said, that, uh, it was the, that his feelings were valued, his, what his thoughts were valued. And that was it. But now, isn't that of some worth if you do have a child who, for example, has done nothing but learn by rote? 
aren't you attempting to bring out the fullness of that young person and get that person to reflect and think and meditate? I, <laughs> if you think the confusion of the Vietnam War with the Korean War is thinking and meditating, why then of course that, that, that's, that's very nice. The tragedy is that these kids have no conception of thinking. And if we, we're talking about adding something as an extra along the fringes, fine. But when you see how far behind we are behind almost every large industrial nation, or even behind Korea, for heaven's sake, uh, you wonder what makes them think that we have the luxury of spending our time on these kinds of uh, little experiments in the classroom. Uh, just recently, I received a letter from a high school student who wanted my opinion on a wide variety of subjects. And this was a classroom assignment. That this questionnaire was to be sent out to people. And I wrote him back that the opinions of old men like me don't matter. What matters is whether young people like you learn to think, get some knowledge, because you're going to be making these decisions long after I'm gone. And to think that people are wasting your time, having you send out these questionnaires to people you don't know, is a sign of just why we're so far behind. 